Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to set any objects you want on fire. So let's get started. For this project I will use this sword right here and I want to set the front part on fire. Therefore select your object, press tab to go into edit mode and also activate the x-ray mode. Now I hop into side view and only select the part that I want to set on fire. After selecting everything, press P to separate it by the selection. As you can see now, we have two separated objects. One is the front part and one is the back. Now I will only select the front part and press F3. This will open up this menu and we can search for the quick smoke effect. Let's select this one and it will set up a smoke simulation. The domain is way too big, so let's scale it down and place it around the front part. Alright, if we would play the simulation now, you can see we only have smoke. To change that into fire, let's select the front part again, let's go into the physics folder and under flow type select the fire preset. Make sure you are in the solid viewport to see the fire preview and if you hit play, you can see the simulation starts. Now let's look at some settings to make the fire the way we want. Under the fuel we can change how much fire we want. If we put this to 0.1 you can see we have only a little fire and if we put this to 10 you can see there is way too much. Normally I leave the fuel at 1 but you can also put this to 2 to have some more room to play around with. Under flow source we can change the surface emission. This means how close to the surface the fire starts emitting. Normally I like to put this to 0.5 so you can see the fire starts closer to the object itself and it looks way more realistic. We can also animate the surface emission factor to start the animation at a later point in time. So let's maybe move to frame 15 and put the surface emission to 0, press I to set a keyframe then go to frame 20 and set it to 0.5 and also set a keyframe. And now if we jump back to the frame 1, so we restart the simulation, always do this if you change some settings. Then if we hit play, you can see the fire only starts at frame 50 to 20. Good, now the fire looks a little bit boring and super straight. To give this some more variation, we can add in a texture. So let's activate it and we actually have to create a texture first. So let's go into the texture settings and add a new one. Under the type we can change it to clouds or to whatever else you like. Play around with the size a little bit. I will move this down to maybe 0.1. And under color I will up the contrast so we can see it better. After that let's jump back into the physics section and select the texture we just created. If we restart the simulation now, you can see the fire is not as constant as before. So we have some spots with no fire and some spots with more fire. And this also helps to create some more realism. If the spots that have no fire are a little bit too big, we can change the size to maybe 0.5. And now we can see it looks way better. Good, after that I normally jump into the domain settings. So I select the domain and we look at all the settings here. First of all, we have the resolution. This just means how detailed the fire is. Most people ask me what are the best settings for my PC. And the answer I give is always it depends on how far the object is away from the camera. If the object is that far away, you don't have to have such a detailed fire texture. So I think 32 resolution is good enough. If you have a super close up, so something like this, you have to have a high resolution and the highest I would go is 256. If we start the simulation now, you can see the PC loads way longer. Even my computer, which is actually super good, has a hard time to simulate this in real time. I would recommend if you use such a high resolution, only use this one to bake it. But if you just want to see how it looks, we can change it back to 32 or 64 to see some more details. Good, then we have the time scale. This just means how fast the flame evolves and also spreads out. And normally I find the time scale one is okay, but it's sometimes a little too fast for a fire. So we can lower this down to 0.5 or to 0.75, just to have a more relaxed fire as you can see here. If you want a super high energetic fire, you can also up this time scale, but for my project 
right now, I think I'll leave it at 0.75. All right, let's open up the gas settings and in here we can change also a lot of settings about the fire. The heat setting also does a similar thing as the fuel before. So if we up this to five, we can see we have way more heat and the fire is way bigger and rises up higher. For my project, I think the heat is good at one. Maybe even that is too high, so I'll lower it down to 0.5. Let's see how this looks. This is good for me. The vorticity setting means how crazy the fire behaves. So if you put this all the way up to one, you can see the fire gets super crazy and it's not really usable. But if we put it to 0.1, you can see it gives the fire some character and it's way more interesting to look at. Maybe point 0.1 is still not enough, so let's put it to point 0.2 and see how it looks. And I think this looks super great. Now because the vorticity factor is a bit higher, the fire doesn't rise that much anymore, so I will up the heat again to 1. And that's actually how it always is in a fire simulation. You have to trial and error, change some settings until you find the one that works the best for you. The dissolve setting is also a super important step that you can't actually see in this viewport. Because in this viewport, we can't see all the smoke that gets generated. It's kind of invisible. I will show you how it looks, but you don't have to do this step right now. We will look at this later. But as you can see in the cycles render viewport over here, the smoke actually gets generated. It's the exact same scene, but in the solid viewport, we can only see the flames and not the smoke. And with this dissolve factor right here, we can activate it. And if we play the animation now, you can see the fire stays the same, but the smoke dissolved. Which means if you want smoke, maybe don't activate this dissolve setting, but if you just want the fire and maybe a little bit of smoke, activate this dissolve setting. You can also change the time. If you want a little bit more smoke, up this value maybe to six, seven or eight. If you want even less smoke, you can put this to a lower value. But this is just to show you that we don't have to generate unnecessary smoke that we can't even see in the final result which just takes a lot of the power of your computer and the cache later will be way longer if you don't have this activated. All right back into our new scene we can also activate the noise setting this will also give the fire some more noise maybe maybe it gets even more interesting as you can see we have way more details in the flame itself but also again the higher these values are the lower the flames actually rise in the end so for that example we also have to up the heat again to two to get the same height as before and have also some noise in it if you feel like the noise is too much you can also lower this to 0.5 and in my case this looks super great if you open up this fire setting down here you have a lot of options also to play around with just change some values and see how the fire reacts normally i don't touch this value good if you're happy with your simulation go under cache and define a folder where the cache should be saved this can be anywhere on your computer also set the range from which frame to which frame it should simulate i only want frame 1 to 120 then don't forget to change your resolution i will up this to 120 and 28 for this tutorial to show you how it looks a little bit more detailed. After that, change the type to all and press bake. This will always take up a lot of time, so just sit back and relax. All right, after the bake is done, select a frame you think looks super cool, then we will start texturing it. I said it before, I used the cycles render, it's just way more realistic. And let's jump over into the rendered viewport at the top here. Normally you won't see anything. Therefore we have to switch this timeline out with the shader editor and we can see we have a principled volume node here. If you can't see this, you have to select the domain again. Maybe you think now why we can't see anything. This is because the fire or the heat is stored in an attribute node. So we have to put in an attribute node and plug this one into the emission strengths. And now we have to define which attribute we actually want to show. And in our case, it's the heat attribute. Make sure you type this out correctly because otherwise you won't see anything. Good, with that we can see the fire, but it's still black and white. To change this, we add in a color ramp node, plug the attribute into the color ramp 
and the color ramp into the emission color. Now we can change this black color to a orange one and also the white color to maybe a lighter orange, something like this and the fire gets some color. Right now the emission is super low so to up the emission we have to add in a converter, a math converter. Plug this one into the top here, set it to multiply and then if we up the value we can see we have a nice glowing fire. Right now we have two options on how to change the look of the fire. The first option is we can just play around with the colors, we can also add in another color at the end and make this one a little bit darker and maybe you saw it already but the part down here is darker so we have like some some more spots that do not glow that much and I feel like you get way more details out of it if we have a darker color in the end. Apart from that before I forget it set the density to zero. This will remove unnecessary smoke stuff outside of the fire. To make the fire even more realistic we can add in a second color ramp node and plug this one before our math multiplier. Now if we close the black value you can see we remove fire at the top and if we move the white color down the fire gets more glowy. To make it more interesting we have to add in a third color and plug this one also at the back. Give this color a darker value, something like this. And if we move this closer to the white part, we get way more details in the fire. Similar to before with this color down here. In my opinion, we have a little bit too much smoke flames at the top here. So I will move this black value closer to the right side. So we only see the fire. And then I will also adjust the colors to get the look I actually want. And yes, if we switch back to our timeline, we can see the fire simulation works perfectly fine. Fire moves super cool. It also starts at the frame 50 as we defined and it lights up at this point. Just to let you know, if you want to make some changes for the fire right now, you have to delete the bake, so you have to press free all, change the settings you want to change and then bake it again. Good, this is it for today. I hope you could set your object on fire. If you have some questions, just write them in the comments and I see you the next time. Peace out.